import export from London Town for the sing your song. Snob television. The show is coming, baby, and it's gonna be just so different. Snob. Snob. The show is coming. The show is coming. It's 1989, you know. The Victorian British artist is dead, you know. That's where you gotta be. You've got six people to pay. Keep eating.
very rare that it seems to be enjoyable and yet it's so fulfilling you know it's weird i mean i don't know i don't know what it is that we try to release but you know it's generally serious <laughs> work with those sensations that are triggered by sound, um, those visual sensations and, and sort of environmental sensations. You put that in a pop context with some, you know, groovy guitars and stuff with, you know, frat party sort of guitars and some, you know, um, 
other things and you have something that's very satisfying that's obviously that requires a, a great deal of not a, well this requires a certain amount of active participation in the listening process and it's um and it's a lot more fun to do and to listen to than than you know baby baby i can't live without you which is in fact not a very realistic sentiment i'm not stupid i'm a man it almost a roar. false ideology. I mean, you two are supposed to be Christians, right? And a big Christian belief is that thou shalt not um, commit adultery. It sounds like videos of Red Rocks. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if these are the actual words God used, but <laughs> <laughs> it's something like thou shalt not um, become the false messiah, right? Oh, dear, oh dear. Right, and that bongo guy, right? <laughs> He's having a good stab at it, isn't he? Where are the pixies? Good night, and uh, the throw muses are on. Stop pensando sobre viendo como hice esto en New Jersey. Aquí me está con la vida buena y alguna rica y chévere. Me voy, puñeta cabrona.
it? I forget who said it. I think it was Herbert Marcuse said the, the enduring thing about capitalism is that whatever you do, whatever you throw at it, it will absorb it and sell it back to you. And that's the simple rules of sort of... Punk rock was only exciting for a, a very little while. But there's certain sort of points about it which are still sort of like work with what I'm involved in now. Just the idea that it's not really, you shouldn't really be doing it just for the cash, you know. But you could probably say that to Woody Guthrie or, you know, a lot of people. I am Bono and this is a Woody Guthrie tribute. <laughs> If you could only like tear out one eyeball and place oh, it shit. looking directly into your other eyeball, you would probably encounter an intense form of video feedback. 
<laughs> who would probably like left brain, right brain unleash outrageous emotional <laughs> meanderings. No doubt it would just go left to right and over and over and over again. Or probably who knows, you probably only hear it in one ear. It would probably be everything you'd ever heard in the other year, but like in fast and slow motion at the same time. Probably with a slight flange. A lot of your songs actually seem to be about things like the sort of degeneration or the degeneracy of mass culture. I think one can't help but notice it. And it's bound to leak through in the writing in a very natural way, rather than actually saying, I'm going to write about... Whenever you start looking at something which is uh, even optimistic, you, you suddenly, the deeper one thinks about it, or the more you uh, plug into uh, the subject, even in a... In a unconscious way, not, you know, not researching it as such, um, the darker side of it tends to be more important than the optimistic side. Money stars 
buzzing near is something which annoys you. I mean, it, I wish you know. I was just trying to focus on this, but this, they they can't they won't stop that noise. You know. I mean, the noise can also refer to music. I wish they'd stop doing it. For Christ's sake, they just turn it off. <laughs> It seems like women are obviously redefining themselves and we come from, I guess, a post-feminist generation. There are all these women that keep saying, well, I'm not a feminist or anything. I'm thinking, what are you? <laughs> you don't like women? You don't, like, you don't think we should be anything?
trying to make it into a kind of quite a hip kind of record but it just wasn't happening so we just thought right it's going to be poppy let's go for it and we had the whole hog and actually use the sort of novelty aspect of it or the, the novelty sort of... novelty <laughs> what <laughs> that's it we're not doing right. a <laughs> Totally, totally tragic song about hate taking those extremes. Uh, when ugly emotions reach cancerous proportions, nothing more. Yo. 
beat the grave of a face Really wouldn't look out of place In a garden of rooms, sorrows and tombs Your Judas tree, oh how it blooms tonight Your conscience must be cherry filled. You cut me up without any guilt. Oh, I played the farmer who just come to town. The moon must have cringed when it looked down. What he saw on the floor, last fatal blow. One moment of lust, shadow my trust. I refuse to believe it. I saw with my eyes, still can't believe what you said was a lie. Television is like a big drug in America. You know, you just sit up and you watch it and you get dope by it. And you don't, you tend not to read and you tend only to, to, um, you tend only to believe what this television, what this tube is telling you. Here in Britain, for the past two years, we've been listening to rumors among the West Indian community that the Yardi are operating behind the scenes in several major cities. Don't know how many, but they suspect there are still relatively few. There are certainly yardies in, in this country at the moment, and they are involved in extortion, they're involved in drugs, uh, they're involved in vice, and we see it as something uh, in the nature of a cancerous growth. Out there, I had the desire to score music for a motion picture. I'd been around a while, and it was getting too late to wish I'd been classically trained or attended film school to achieve this. So I had to draw strength from the fact that my written contributions to the bands I'd been in were usually of a somewhat thematic nature anyway, thus keeping the wheels of my dream firmly in motion. As a bass player, I travelled the world twice over, perhaps even then subconsciously searching for some kind of subject matter that would spark off the necessary inspiration to fully express the area of creativity I was most impassioned about. It was when I returned home to Manchester, to the Moss Side streets I'd known since my childhood, that things fell into place. Here, right on my own doorstep, was one of the most contrasting, intense, exciting and threatening of filmic backdrops. You have nothing to worry about, Mr. Adamson. I promise. I won't breathe a word.
As a vehicle, I observed and used the confines of Moss Side's underworld, noting particularly the movements of a character who was gripped by fear and paranoia, a virtual prisoner of his own mind, desperately looking for a seemingly impossible way out. Here was the impetus to musically stage a provocative, visually stimulating, three-act tale of one man's search for lost identity and of his eventual quest for beauty, truth, and freedom. Thank you. 